Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now I've got my blanket loom out again. I've been asked how do you put lines, pom-pom lines in a pom-pom blanket where you've got grey, pink or blue and white, lemon and green, whatever you want in a straight line where they're not mixed up. Now I'm going to show you quickly how to do that. Now I've got my little frame on here, this is just my little demo size. This makes a blanket the size for a doll's pram. So that's why this one is quite small. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Now I'm going to do my blanket in a pink, a really pretty pink and a grey. Grey and pink go together absolutely beautifully it really does now a lot of people might think i'm not doing a baby blanket to go over a pram in gray now really the mixture when you see it is absolutely beautiful i'm going to do the base in gray with a gray pom-pom stripe and i'm going to put a pink pom-pom stripe now this is just a tootsie yarn from Wilco, it's only 99 pence a ball. Now I'm using four strands of pink and I'm going to use four strands of grey. You won't use all of this, even on a standard size blanket, you won't use all of it. Now I'm going to put that down there. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using four strands of yarn at the same time. I've got four strands here and I'm going to tie it down onto this corner peg. Now you might see Motley running around in the background because he's sitting right beside me, aren't you? So the first thing you do is we're going to put down the base of the blanket. Now the base of the blanket is just your standard five rounds on the frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around the whole frame using every peg and we're going to do five rounds. So it's up and down and around just like this and there's Mutley there. He's growing up quite big now. He's a year old now. So we're going to go up and down the pegs like this. Oops. I need to tighten the bolts on my frame. <coughs> I'm going to go and see what he's barking at. Come on you, come on. Never mind the cat. So now we're going to go around this way and we're going to do this five times all around this frame. So I'll get on with that and I'll come back and show you what it's like. By now, you should know how to do this. Mutley, leave the cat alone. Leave the cat. Good boy. So we're going to fill in the little gaps in between all the way around my frame. Try to keep the frame in a way that you can actually still see it all. So I'll get on with that and I'll come back and I'll show you what it's like once I've got my five rounds on. So I've got my five rounds on and what I'm going to show you is, I'll zoom in just a little bit. The way you can tell you've got five rounds is you should have five sets. That's three and four, I'll pull that up a little bit, in between every single set of pegs or nails, you should have five sets of your lines. So you should have five little ladders 
between each of your sections. If you don't have five in between every peg, you've either missed a round. If you've got five and four here, you need to wind back because you've missed the pegs somewhere or a half a round somewhere. So between every single peg, you should have five sets of your yarn and that's how you can tell that you've got your five all done so we'll zoom back down again so i'm going to show you how to do the lines i'll straighten my frame up just a little bit so i've got my five rounds on of my base in the grey now I'm going to put a stripe, every other stripe on my blanket is going to be grey pom-poms. Now I'm going to show you how to put an easy grid on to stop you from cutting down into your blanket base layer when you're doing pom-poms that are the same colour as your base. Now I've been working on this, trying to come up with different ideas how to do this. In my old frame, I had a nail, a little tiny nail, in between each peg and I wound the wool around like this on the, the nails. Now I found a much easier way to do this. So here is a top tip on making a grid so you don't cut into the base when your blanket is all the same colour and you're doing pom-poms. Take an entirely different colour. Now I've got white. I'm just going to tie it onto the corner peg. I'm tying it down here onto this corner peg. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a diagonal lines. I'm going to put two sets of diagonal lines on. Now I'm going to miss the first peg and go over this one. I'll throw that down there up to the next one, down to that one, up and down and I'm going to make some diagonal lines. As you can see the white, it will cross over here but it also comes in here and what this is going to do is going to give you a guide so that you won't cut down into that base. You'll see it once I do the blanket, once I start cutting the pom-poms. So we're just going to go up and down in a diagonal manner with a totally different colour from what your blanket is going to be. Now this is going to mark out a little grid just like that. So you'll, get, you'll get the idea of this in a few minutes. So to keep the blanket even, I'm going to put my pom-pom lines, I'm going to run them along this way. So if I start on a grey, I'm going to finish on a grey. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wind our yarn up to this first peg here, miss this one and go down this one. Miss that one up miss one so we will be winding the gray around peg one three five seven nine you just keep going on until you've got your blanket finished now if you can see what i mean i'm finishing on a gray line like this now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come up and down every peg this way you've got to go every peg on the even way. Now up and down every peg on the even side. Now when we come back down we're going to just follow, miss a peg, follow the yarn that's already there, miss a peg, down that one, miss that peg and we're going to come along that one. like that so that's that done now what we're going to do is we're going to go up 
and down this way, every peg, fill in the gaps, up and down this way. Just remember when you get to this corner, you have to come over to this side. Don't work your way back up. You have to come over to this side here. Up and down every peg to finish that first round. And we're going to do five rounds of the grey like this. There we go. Now, as you can see, I've got my grid. Now, can you see what the grid is going to do? Look, the grid is going to pull that up. So when I cut my pom-poms here, I won't go down past that white. And you'll see that will come clear to you once we start to tie it. So again, miss a peg and around. We're going to miss that peg, miss that peg. And that's that second round of the lines going up and down that way done. Now we're going to come up and down this way. Every peg, because we're on the even ones, so up and down every peg. And that will keep your pom-pom pattern even. So we're going to go around and come back. Just keep following your yarn. We're missing the pegs this time because we're going on the odd side from left to right. Now when you get down to the bottom, remember we're going around and up this way. You'll see it more clearly with the pink when we do the pink. But to do your pom-poms and stripes, you've got to remember every other peg on the odd side and every peg going up and down on the even side. It keeps your pattern symmetrical. Zoom back out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my frame around like this. Turn it around. So I'm going to tie line 1, line 3, line 5, line 7 and line 9. I'm only going to tie the ones that have that double grey. Now what you're going to do is you're going to start by going down. Try not to catch that grid. Can you see that little white grid that we did? Try not to catch that. So just go down into there, down the top left and come up the bottom right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tie in a cross section, a cross section like this. Now this first one, we're just going to tie it and leave a tail. The tail will get integrated into your fringe of your blanket. Tie it nice and tight. There we go. Now I'm just going to leave, tuck that in through there out of the way and just pull it out this other side here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to hold your yarn in your hand like this. I'll move my frame over a little bit. Hold your yarn in your hand like this. We've already done this one, so now we're going to do this one. So go down the top right. You've got this loop. Give it one twist, put your shuttle through and pull up and give it a little wriggle. That will tighten that little slip knot that you've made in there and it will keep it really nice and nice and tight. So now we're going to go along to the next one. Down the top left, come up the bottom right side. Make sure you're not tangled in any of your pegs. You've got your hoop in your hand. Twist. So you have a twist in here. I found if you do that, you're making a nice 
tight slip knot. Pull your yarn up like this, take your finger out and pull up and wriggle back and forth and that'll tighten that in. Some people when they have a loop and they put it through and they don't twist it, it does come loose down here. This makes it like a slip knot and holds it nice and tight. Now go down the top right and come up the bottom left. Make sure you're not snagged on any of your nails or your pegs. Twist, shuttle through, pull up and wriggle it back and forward. Move on to the next one. Top right, up through the bottom left. Make sure you're not snagged on anything. You've got your hoop, one twist, shuttle through and up and wriggle back and forward. That will tighten it in nice and tight. Down the top left, the top right, up the bottom left, twist through and pull. And tighten it in. So we're going to tie all the way along to the end and we're going to go up to this next one up here and we're going to tie along that way. Miss that one, tie that one. All the ones that we've got our little peg on, that is the line that you're tying. So just once more, down the top left, come up through the bottom right. And you've got your hoop, give it a twist, put your shuttle through and pull up and wriggle it back and forward. And that will tighten it in. We're going to go down the top right up through the bottom left make sure you're not caught on any of your nails or your pegs you've got your loop twist put your shuttle through and pull up and wriggle it can you hear it just going tightening itself in there so we're going to work our way around our frame. So I'm going to tie every other line and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Now I've got my blanket all tied. I've tied a line here, missed a line, tied a line, missed one, tied one. Now I'm going to turn my frame around. As you can see I've still got my little diagonal threads in to show me sort of how far down to cut when I turn it around. Now as you can see this white is coming through here and you can still sort of use it as a guide to where not to cut below. So I'm going to put my scissors in and my pom-pom I'm going to cut here right in the middle and I'll need to make sure I judge it on this end because this one isn't tied this one here is not tied so what we're going to do is we're just going to snip through the grey we can always tidy up the pom pom later. Now my white yarn is there and I can see roughly where I'm not to go below. So I'll just keep snipping halfway up that that line there using my guide, my white wool that's my guide where I'm not to go below that because that's the base. I've still got some, a couple of strands there. Try not to cut through that guideline. And through there, I'll lift it up and that'll lift that little piece of yarn up there. And there we go. So that's us got through to the base. So that little guideline, it just shows me not to cut any further. 
Now on this one, we'll cut through the middle here. I'm just taking my time because I don't want to cut through the base of my blanket. And there's my guideline again, so I can I know that I don't have any more grey to cut through. Now, once we're finished, this guideline will you just need to snip it out, and it will just all slide out. So halfway down this one, so we're going halfway down here to cut the pom pom here of this one. Now you're going to see there's no guideline on that one. But it is there, you can see it, it is there. So just cut through. Once you've done a lot of blankets, you'll, you'll get the hang of where you have to cut it and how deep you have to cut it. And that's us through those strands. So we're through those strands. So now we've got the grey pom-poms cut. Now don't worry if you've cut through any of your, your grid. And don't worry if you've cut one or two of the blanket underneath. At least we know the base is, is really quite safe. Now we don't need the grid for the next colour because the next colour's pink. So what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to cut the grid off by snipping it. It was scrap wool that I used anyway. So I'm just going to pull all that out. It should come out. I've got a little loose. So if you just pull it out like that, if you cut through the diagonal white parts that are down here, the rest of it should just slide out. So I've got my four strands of my pink. I've got four strands and I'm going to tie it down into this corner down here. I'll tie it onto this peg down here. Now what I'm, I'm going to come up to this one. Miss this one because it's already got the, the grey pom-poms. Come down this one, miss that one and go up. Got a little tangle in my wool. Miss that one. So when we get up to this top corner, we're going to go right around the corner and we're going to come up and down every peg. Just go across the top of the pom-poms that are there already. We're just going to follow the same pattern as we did for the grey. Now don't wind your yarn on too tight. You don't want to snap your pegs. And we're going to do five rounds, the same as we did with the grey. Now around that top corner and we're going to follow 
these lines now it's these lines that will make your pink pom-poms once we've got that tied in and we'll cut the same as we did for the grey and we'll have a line of grey pom-poms and a line of pink so around and then up every nail work our way back to finish off our round I've got Mutley sitting down there just waiting to dive on this wool that I've got and down and then that's us done one round and you know we've done one round because we've got one line of pink in between all our pegs so I'm going to continue to do this until I've got my five rounds of pink on. Once I've done that, I'll come back and show you. Rounds two, three, four, five. I've got five pink lines. One, two, three, four, five. In between all my pegs. So that way you know you've done your full five rounds. Now what we're going to do now is I'm going to flip the board over and I'm going to tie these lines from here up to here and here and here just like we did with the grey but you can see a little bit more clearly because it's pink. We're going to tie along these lines. So I'm going to flip my board over. And we'll be tying the second row, the fourth, the sixth and the eighth. So these are the rows, the ones that are not tied, these are the ones that we will be tying. And I'm going to tie it again with my shuttle and I'll be tying it in the grey. Even though you'll get a cross on the pink, by the time we cut the pom-poms you won't see the grey that's tied the pink pom-poms up. So I'm going to do that just the same as I did for the grey. I'm going to work my way along here and tie up these one, two, three. I've got four rows to tie and I'm going to tie that. So I've got my pink on and you can see a little bit more clearly where the pink pom-poms are going to be along here. So I've got my grey here and my pink here. So I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut the pink pom-poms just the same way I did the grey. I'll cut here, here, through here and here all the way around where I've tied. This is where my pink pom-poms are going to be. So I'm going to do that because I'm just going to turn the video off and get that done because the video is taking a little bit longer than I actually thought. So I'll get those pom-poms cut and I'll be back and I'll show you what it's like. So I've only got this one left and this is how easy it is. You just grab that piece of waste wool and just cut your pom-pom to the same size as that one. And that one. <laughs> Look at that. And this is how you make lines, a grey line, a pink or whatever colour you want. That is how you do lines. Just remember it's every other nail on this side. To keep it symmetrical, you see I started on a grey and I finished on a grey because I used the odd side. This blanket will be turned around that way so that these little stripes will be this way. Once it comes off the frame, it will be that way. And just remember, when you're going across your frame, do every nail so that you can make your pom-pom. All I have to do now is cut between my pegs like this to take my blanket off. 
Then what I'll do is I'll give it a little spray with some warm water and I'll pop it into my dryer and that'll fluff it right away up and then I'll just trim off my pom-poms a little bit. There's one or two that have got a little piece or two that are sticking up a little higher than the rest and we'll just give it a little trim. So I'll get that cut off the frame, I'll get it tidied up and I'll show you what it looks like. So here is my blanket all finished. I just need to, to trim up the edge. I do wish to put pink first though. It would have made the blanket look bigger if I put a lighter colour. Put the pink against the fringing on this side. But hey ho, we live and we learn, don't we? And it's turned out absolutely beautiful. Look at that. It's absolutely beautiful. If you want this for a rug, you can make this into a rug as well. But make sure you add some non-slip backing to the back of it so it doesn't slide around. This would make a perfect little pom-pom rug as well. And it's really, really soft. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Please click that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. You'll also notice a little blue join button. Now you can become a member of my craft channel. And I will be able to post pictures and tell you what's coming up on my channel. And you'll get to know that. No one else will if you're a member. Also, you'll get to see my tutorials first. So you'll get the first day to watch it on your own yourself before it goes open to the public. So that's also a little benefit as well. But to do all that, I need some members. And uh, if you appreciate my channel, if you appreciate the hard work, that goes into my channel then please help out by becoming a member just click on that join button you can stay joined as long as you like it's up to you but I'm very grateful for anyone who does become a member of the channel that's going to eventually be really help me out financially to be able to keep my YouTube channel running because everyone knows art and craft can be expensive there's a lot of cheap ideas on my channel, and but it's still a lot of hard work and I still need to have some kind of income so that I can replenish all my craft supplies. So click on that little join button as well if you would like to become a member of my channel. Thank you very much for that. Even if you just want to buy me a drink, just <laughs> click on it and join it and I'll be able to buy myself a, a few glasses of wine next time I'm out. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. In the description, I will put how you can join my Facebook group. It's a free craft group. Anyone who does art and craft is very welcome to come and join. I'll put the details how to do that. You just go into Facebook search, type in Crafty Twints Art and Craft and you'll find my channel. Or just type in Alison Russell's Craft Channel and you'll find my channel that way as well. You'll find it on Facebook. You'll find it on Facebook. Also, please come and follow me on Instagram. I have an Instagram and I don't have very many followers at the moment. So on this channel, there's over 99,000 subscribers. So please, some of you, come along and join me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Instagram for me, I'm working my way around it, but it's instant, isn't it? I can take pictures of things that I've done and I can get them out there right away. Even just if it's pictures of Motley, what I'm doing that day, all that kind of thing. Just a little interaction between me and all the members that I have and the followers. So come along and follow me on Instagram. That's hashtag Alison Russell's Craft Channel. I'll put the details down in the description as well. So until the next time, happy crafting and I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.